beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on Paul made a statement he said let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ number one and then he calls them stewards custodians a steward is one who has been trusted with something there are men that the Bible calls stewards of the mysteries of God stewards like I give you a Bible I say please hold it for me and every time they are looking for that Bible, they make reference to you because you have been made a steward. In Matthew 25, he made other stewards of his financial resources. Is that true? So the Bible says, let a man, please keep it there, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. But then much more than that, that we are stewards words of the mysteries of God verse 2 says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful faithful in what faithful in communicating those mysteries moreover it is required that if at any point by the grace of God you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of God your assignment among other things is faithfulness to make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that God has committed to your care rise to the reality. You see, stewards are dispensers. The, the whole idea is not for them to keep it. It is that it flows to the people. It's just that by the election of grace, they are the communicators of this reality. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Not stewards of preaching. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. With all humility, there are preachers, but there are stewards of the mysteries of God. Are we together? You know that a dimension of God was allocated to certain personalities. And the Bible encourages them to be faithful, unbending, ensuring that people enter that dimension. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry to God in one minute. And say, Lord, the dimension of the mystery that has been committed, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Are we praying? Saprakoto Supriyata Balanabos. Lord, we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries. Stewards of the mysteries the secrets of god hallelujah please sit down good evening everybody we're in for a serious time tonight just smile at someone close to you and say good evening are we together praise the lord it's always 
my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. See, so grants grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja, and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engaged, not only accessed. I used to say accessed alone, but I found out that was not very accurate. We rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available, but how much light we have accessed and engaged. You can access it, meaning you are not in ignorance of his operation, but not engage it. You will not see anything. We rise in this kingdom, brothers and sisters, on the strength of the light, the illumination, the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged. Accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit. But engaging it is the product of faith. Accessing the word is not faith. It gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word. I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles they desire deliverance they desire healing but they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do. No. Desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit. When there is desire, you will defy every excuse. You will defy every consequence and pursue. Your pursuit gives you access. Your desire gives you the inner strength, the tenacity, the staying power to pursue information pursue light pursue an encounter are we together then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to put your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well I have said it again and again that I don't believe the church of God is in ignorance necessarily. By the grace of God, the servants of God scattered around Nigeria, Africa and the world have done well, commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Are we together? Yes. We give that credit to all the pastors, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of Christ, bridging the ignorance that is in the body. But the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access. And we believe that the moment you find truth, automatically it should produce results. No, sir. No, sir. 
truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it i can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but i can turn and live a very very hard life i have access to the mic but i have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, is a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of Christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage engaging is very important to engage means to put the, the word of god to work you engage it and stay there then it is at the point of engaging the word that god's integrity is committed there are many people when you teach on tithing they will help you finish the message but they don't engage it they don't do it they do it occasionally how about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in acts chapter 4 the bible says that paul and um, peter and, and and john they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is so the bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rise you see that at that point the bible says he leaping stood that guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone the power of god hovering around how about god genesis chapter one the bible says there was darkness from the hebrew word tohu wabohu darkness confusion and then the bible says the spirit of god the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around but no change happened until god said and god acted he engaged and said let there be light be light appear reappear and then there was that and he said it and he saw it believers are largely not in ignorance so while we seek to open the body of christ to greater frontiers of revelation i am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results 
You see, the Bible talks about a certain group of people. It says they are ever learning. Is God blessing us already? Ever learning, meaning that they have an appetite, and that's supposed to be a good thing. An appetite to explore. Let's go deeper. Wonderful. Let's go higher. Wonderful. But the question is, what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and Sunday services, Wednesday prayer meetings? Many believers receive prophecies. They receive words. They study the Bible. They read books. They have volumes and volumes of jottings. Access. But they do not engage. And so at the end of it, they are disappointed. They are angry at themselves and at God. And they are almost tempted to say, Lord, your word did not work. And God says, no, 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 let's be fair. Show me what you did. From January till now, how many times did you tithe? Say, Lord, let's not talk about that one. Just did you bless me or not? And God says, look at it. Lord, you didn't heal me from the pain. And God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome. We argue we explain intellectually we bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity and god says well i'm not the one in need you're the one who is looking for the solution look how difficult we make it to get the anointing look how difficult we make it to be prosperous look how difficult we make it to rise look how difficult we make it to get the power of god let me tell you the truth the difficulty is that i think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word we dispense the word but at the end of it we do not leave our sermons with the action point the very point and that's where members don't like that's why we like prophecies a lot because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you just, what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back i see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around and highest they check around and see um if there is an opportunity for a joke and they you know believers were spiritually lazy not because we don't fast and we don't pray but that point of engaging the word one of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of Bishop David Oyedeko in my life is that among other things, his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do. Good master, the rich man said, what must I do? To be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know the western world may god bless them we have received so much from them but i think that this this error of allowing god to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory 
please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as i dispense these truths by the grace of god alongside all the men and women of god scattered in this nation and around the world please i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership your partnership with the word of god does not negate what god has done your partnership with the word of god is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precepts but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do then he will grant you grace so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating a, i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man you like reaping where you don't sow so i i just thought instead of wasting my time i kept it on the guy can go and remove your thing collect your thing the bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents so you see increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension god has given you a pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you 
10,000 naira. You mismanage it carelessly. You do not find out the principles of God. There's nothing in it for God. There is no system of accountability and wise use of it. You can't sit down and be mesmerizing on 1 million, 10 million. God does not work like that. Are we together? How about anointings? There are men of God who admire their whole assignment is more power. And God says, calm down. The grace I've given you is enough to save souls. Even if it can't heal sick bodies now. Show how you have engaged that grace enough. To be able to open you up to other access. And say, Lord, what is salvation? Anybody can do it. Then God grants you the grace. For intercession. And he said, Lord, that one is too hard. I need power. Direct, raw power to just prophesy or lay hands. And God says, no, it will never work that way. Never work that way. God is revealing to us as simple as what I'm sharing is. God is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change. It's not because the word of God has failed. It is because we seldom engage the word. We complain. We receive the word. Let me tell you what most of us do. You know, when, when people complain about certain areas, I ask them, have you listened to this, my teaching? Before I finish, they smile. And the person is not getting the result, and he will listen now. He say, ah, have you listened to um, 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 evidence of genuine intimacy? They help you finish it. <laughs> and you look at this guy, and you know that this guy doesn't know God for sure. Are we together now? Yes. Then you tell him, go and listen to it. And he plays around while he's just listening, distracted, doing a lot of things, gisting with friends, and then catching up. And then he tells you, sir, I just finished. There are, there are certain teachings, one hour teaching, but I finished them in three days. One hour teaching in three days. Because every five, five minutes, I'm stopping. Jesus, something just entered my spirit. I see. I was studying something there and I almost jumped. I almost jumped from my bed. I said, yeah, yeah, what is this? He said, I've not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my Bible. Drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. You finish a three hours message. You never pause <laughs> to listen, to learn. Even when something is very powerful, you are just saying, wow, just continue. Even the way you study in school, brothers and sisters, that's not how you do well. You pause. The psalmist will say, Sila, pause, ponder, think, write if need be, pray if need be. Hallelujah. If you don't like what I'm saying, forget about results. God is not a herbalist. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at the aspects of your life. You will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance. But you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge, truthfully speaking. You already know what to do and the grace has been supplied. But that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest. That's what causes a lot of trouble. What do you have in your house? Nothing except a cruise of oil. And the prophet said, that's it. Madam, this is what I want you to do. Go. Why didn't the prophet prophesy? Vessels, find your way to this poor woman's house. Say, madam, carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the kept multiplying how about the widow in zarephath when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah i don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me he said we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam 
I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So, just handle this treasure is in earthen vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I will make sure I tell all those who have you. Are, ah, ah, you would see me and a child. You don't even love women. And start another funny women movement and say, look, there are prophets who don't, they collect things from women. And the Bible says that she, her engaging that thing, all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower. I'm showing you how this works. How about three days? They spent three days on the mountain. And then the people said, these guys are hungry. There will be commotion here now. And Jesus said, feed them. Said, ah, feed them. Even a year's worth of food. No miracle could happen until they, there was something from men. And Andrew found a young boy and carried his bread, his, his lunch box as they call it. And all of a sudden, Jesus lifted it and gave thanks. And there was multiplication. Who taught you that things happen by themselves? It is the dynamics of the workings in terms of God's part that is none of your business. The Bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, nor the way of the wind. That's how you cannot tell the work of God. There is a part of this equation that you can never know. It is sponsored by the wisdom of God. For instance, how your destiny helper will come is not your business. Your own is to engage what brings them. Your destiny helper can be a donkey. A donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details. How will I pay my rent? Lord, I know you are faithful, but let's... Let's be honest here. And God is saying, me, you are telling me to be honest? <laughs> Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. So we don't engage the word at all. At all. Master, if it be thou, bid me come. And Jesus said, really? You want to see a new dimension? I've given you a word. Engage it. Come. All of them stood and said, oh yeah. He didn't say, Peter, come. He just said, come. Whoever walked. He said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter got up and walked. And it was, it, it was surprising, Peter. I'm walking. And he was laughing. And all of a sudden, he was about sinking. Many people see the sinking part. They don't see the part that Jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word. Peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by Jesus himself. If Peter sank, Jesus would be to blame. After all, Jesus knew he was learning. He said, come. Obey him and perish. And watch whether you will perish. Listen, learn this. I'm teaching you how faith works. Peter. He held him and said, no. If you walked on your own, like Jonah, Jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience. So the whale swallowed him. What bailed Jonah out was mercy. Are we together? These are the systems of the kingdom. This is how it works. Guys, go and preach in my name. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. And Jesus, ah, Jesus, won't you go with us? Say, no, no, no. Just go. I've given you my name. Say, where is it? Say, just believe. Keep going. And when they met the first sick person, um, my name is, uh, you saw me with that other guy. He really sent us. I'm not really sure about this. I've not mastered it, but I hope you are not offended if I pray for you. And Peter laid hands on someone. And all of a sudden, to his shock, Peter said, this thing is working. Let's do it again. 
they returned back to Jesus and said, Hi! Jesus, even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name. And Jesus said, that those are little issues. Let's talk about, don't rejoice because of that. Be honest with yourself tonight. Is it really that God has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word? You have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power. Be honest with yourself. Have you engaged it with understanding? Don't sit down and say, God is not anointing me. What do you think? The anointing is not a charm. You eat anything, anywhere, anyhow, anytime. No, sir. No, sir. How about breakthrough? There are many of us that want breakthrough. You hear people, the fact that God is doing it to one person. That per, you see, do you know why we allow testimonies? The most important part of testimonies is not the result. It's the bridge between the problem and the solution. What did the person do? That's what your spirit should be sensitive about. For many of us, we wait till the end of it. Then we say, wow, you mean it? This is how I live my life. I don't sit down and tell God, Lord, create the changes. I say, no, Lord, I know. I give you all the praise. Show me my own part. And I stand up and start engaging it. Start engaging it. Start engaging it. What of our family members? Oh, God, will you keep watching us like this? And God says, no. Listen to Joshua Selman. Oh, God, I don't have the time. I'm, like I was saying, will you keep changing our lives and God says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change and God says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself. It is by a prophet that the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Even if you are a midwife, when you are about to give birth, you need another midwife to help you. That you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself. Listen to this and understand. There are systems in the kingdom. A time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. Is God helping us? So, so many people arrogantly sit down and say, what is there? Is it not man of God? Man, Is it not the same Jesus that died for us? And they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply. Whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment. How long? Please help me. How long? Listen. I think it was in it was in Mina over the weekend. We were preaching for um, Bishop. It was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, Bishop Achaya. And I was sharing there. I said every anointing. Listen to me. Every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it. That you are anointed is not generic in results. The anointing is levels. When your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you, you're already in trouble. There are three ways to come out of that thing. Grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust God for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem. Brothers and sisters, in my little life, I've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone but i've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing it will rubbish you as if you have never met god believe what i'm teaching you if the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged this family now will get up and say okay we have read in the bible and let me tell you what happens they begin to pray at least it's a starting point while they pray the holy ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture 
and said, study the life of Saul of Kish. Do everything they did. And so they start studying. A donkey was missing. We, uh, for us, an animal was not missing. Let me show you how the, the Holy Spirit helps people. What is missing? Joy, peace, love, breakthrough, finances, spiritual upliftment. What did they do? They started moving around and a servant said, let's go and meet a man of God. And the Holy Spirit says, go and do likewise. And they stand up and the Holy Spirit now tells them, look, there's a miracle service coming. You see, the word of God is becoming alive. You are acting. You can sit down at home and say, God has brought it. He said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flames to excuses. It is raining. I'm not very happy. I didn't eat well. We were not joyful yesterday. Those things are the ways demon spirits keep people. But when you stand up as you are walking to come, heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle now while you are coming you are not even sure you will meet me but you are coming anyway while you are coming you are not even sure you will have space but you are coming anyway are you seeing how this thing works you come anyway and you sit down and to your greatest shock it was never for you to meet me while the praise and worship is on fire lands on your situation and all of a sudden, you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it. After Konya or whatever program, you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying, sir, remember we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work. I, my spirit was moving me and you say, God, this is you. Let me show you how breakthrough happens. Breakthrough is worked. It's like the working of miracles. You know how you cook food. You don't drop onions, pepper, fish, whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say, food, cook. No, you walk it. How do you walk it? You get a pot, firewood or whatever you are using. You start engaging. Sometimes it will be painful. As you are cutting something, knife can cut you. But you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain. It's by eating the food, the pain will be healed. So continue. And at the end of it, you have a lovely meal. And everybody who comes around wonders. Brothers and sisters, it is true that God gave grace, but you walked it. Are we together? This part of engaging the word is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah sacrifices praise several things you must engage the word of god there are some of us here you have never sown a seed i'm not saying to me please don't get what i'm saying but you have never most of us is 95 percent receiving five percent giving you will be broke forever that's the equation of poor people are we together yes give me your own is to collect lord who is going to give me and the lord says when are you going to create your own harvest have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain if you use a spoon to spend to send vapor to the air you will spend your whole life there are other people who don't allow challenges to last they walk it till it gives up they walk it till it gives up I believe in results i'm motivated by results i'm very very outspoken about results i'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter it matters sir results matter human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces is that true yes when a woman gets pregnant we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end is that true yes when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable mm. 
the help of God is predictable. The mercy of God is predictable. Results are predictable. Please, my brother, my sister, let me beg us in the name of Jesus to not sit down and hope things change. I'm delivering you from it because after 10 years, it will remain like that until it changes. There are people who, as of January this year, wrote down a list of certain things. They submitted it and asked questions. Lord, how do I engage with you? And right now, God has ticked those things with results. There are others, all they do, every miracle service is, God arise for me, they drop it. Every instruction God gave from January till now, they have not done one. Lift up your hands, they won't lift up. Pray, they won't pray. Celebrate God, dance around all these things. How can I be a, a child? We left these things. Am I in a party? See that? I told you about dancing. I don't like dancing, it's not anything I admire at all. But it's a it's a key. You know how drugs are, how you swallow drugs. Sometimes when you swallow drugs, especially maybe a syrup, it can be so bitter. Especially when you are giving children. They are trying to deny, but your love keeps them there. Swallow it. When they swallow it, you pamper them later on. Swallow it. Do you pity the child? Oh yeah, I'll leave you like that. No. That's how it is. When you are obeying God, don't pity yourself. Oh. No, sir. Don't pity yourself. Abraham carried Isaac and said, up we go. When he kept looking at Isaac, Isaac, I love you, but this one. See, be careful some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level you are emotionally connected to your money you are emotionally connected to your title you are emotionally connected to whatever that's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high you are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry The word of God works. It is reliable. This is how God has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today. And this is how he will help us to rise. But the key is that we engage the word. The key is that we engage the word. We don't sit down and make God responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves. That's not faith. No, that's not faith. You must take inventory of your life. You'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night. I just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit. God is my witness whom I serve that I am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results. See, let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are the only one rising, you are, you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself I'm hearing a song in my spirit. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to become a public speaker. You dropped it here. You have not engaged the word. You found a scripture, but you have not done anything with it. Lord, I want to become a man of God. And the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church. You know, sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever 
brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing god is calling let me use you promise come god is calling promise into ministry for instance go and start a ministry in delta or start a ministry in u.s and then the only thing he does is just says wow i i have learned enough you just jump and go to delta and after five years you are still roaming around as if god didn't call you in that five years those who engage the world are swimming in grace whereas you are there frustrating the grace of god after 10 years you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police they say your age has passed you now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame god and god says no you refuse to engage the world i told you time never changes anything it only reveals time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time but god calls this guy now and he sits down lord what kind of ministry are you giving me oh this is this and he's studying he's learning he's building how do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people he's learning how do we build membership when members cross 500 how do you manage them you are learning how do i grow in the anointing when i have three to five sermons to preach every week how do i manage it with my family life what if i have a business running how do i manage it this gentleman works on himself i tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry now this is anger is usually a product of frustration when you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless you see one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly how are you doing it and people begin to coin explanations I don't want to live a life of a failure I don't want to number one it does not glorify God number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if I have any is to walk and to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things are believed I lie that's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs Lord what I believe about finances is it accurate what I believe about the anointing is it accurate what I believe about fasting and prayer is it accurate I'm not ashamed though if at any point I find out there is a problem I'm not ashamed I, okay Lord let's look at this this is what I used to believe but now I'm seeing I'm learning this Wow amazing I'm growing and you are just let me tell you something there are many anointings to lift our family members but it is at the mercy of their engaging they only complain and insult they insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough and they sit down and hope and wish they will learn you will be surprised and i don't mean to be sarcastic you'll be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what god is doing it will be shocking and surprising are you hearing what i'm saying now the trouble is you are the one who is the patient who cries the patient or the hospital please talk to me when the patient insults the hospital, does the hospital have tears? The hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready. 
Is that true? Lord, I don't want to live my life as a failure. Results can be commanded. This thing has been done before. I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry if you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry if you need members. No, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things, but then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough. The word, the truth, the mystery, the principle, the revelation must be engaged. It must be engaged. It must be engaged. There is a part you have to play. Play it and watch God. Watch God arise for you. As a mighty God and turn things around for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This thing does not take time. It just takes commitment. If I'm building a house, listen, and I have workers building a house for me and they are working, they start working by six and by night, there are those who do night shift and are working. Is that true? And there is another lazy builder. The workers come by 10, they close by two. Whose house will be built first? You see that now? The amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you. There is no way around it. I watch our fathers of faith and I'm surprised that with the kind of results they command, you still see them engaging this thing. They are winning it with all their heart. I was watching... A video by Dr. Paul Enenche and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry and the Lord's Garden the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja and he said just for the the zinc alone just to cover that place they are spending 16 million US dollars zinc not building 16 million us dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10 and this is what is used for zincing so a wise person says this is the result i'm looking for it is on earth already happening in someone's life so what do you do you follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant Dr. Paul Enenche was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer that nothing will ever change just like that. Hallelujah. What are you doing in partnership with the word of God? Do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome? Do you understand? Then if yes, are you engaging completely? The future will show the mysteries and the things that Koinonia is engaging. It's, it's, not, it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now. But the future will tell what is being engaged today. 
You see that? Something I do not know is responsible for where I am. Something I know but have not believed is also responsible for where I am. Something I have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where I am. While you are seated, can you pray, cry to God and say, Lord, I repent. I've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you. But now I have heard you. I have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself. Are you praying? Some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you would have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. Keep praying. Show me what you are engaging. Apostle, I expected that by now I should not be begging for food to feed my family. Show me what you are engaging. Or are you just waiting for things to happen? Show me. Apostle, I expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially. Show me what you are engaging. Let me see it. Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic, certain levels of the anointing. Show me what you are engaging. Sir, I expect that I should be established by now. I should have had a car and a house. Show me what you are engaging. Don't just wish for nothing. I've been coming to church. That's not enough. What have you engaged? Pray. Nothing will ever change, my brother, my sister. Access to truth is not enough. It must be engaged though. Access to truth is not enough. Apostle, I've listened to all your messages on favor. Wonderful. Have you done what was said in the message? Consistently. Have you done what was said in the message? Having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete. Let's not turn God to a game player playing pranks and, and, and expect strange results. Pray. You don't commit 30 minutes to God, 30 minutes of your life, the remaining part of your life, and you want to carry fire. Which God are we talking about here? Prayer zero, word life zero, passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the word show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of God who see ministries that God has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people. They think all about standing here. Sometimes you see me stand here. Let me confess and tell you truly. Most of the time I stand here, most times I'm waiting on God is when I go back that I eat something. There are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as I stand. I'm not saying that's what you must do. After service, you see me stand here to see people. Sometimes past 12. Last week, I went home to one. Don't one crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there. 
Are we together now? We want things without the responsibility attached to it. You, before you barely rest, someone has woken you. There is a challenge. You, when I came, you saw me talking on phone and I called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere. The people don't care that there is service. Listen, let me tell you, for every dimension, there is a price. I, I wish, I don't know how to make you believe this thing. If you are unwilling to pay the price, please forget about the dimension. There are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life, the moment certain things are not done, it will destroy you. It's better for it to have not come. Believe what I'm telling you. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah entered a boat and people, they started losing things. And when they were checking, they said, what is making this boat heavy? Jonah said, I'm the one who, if I were not anointed, I would have slept quietly. But because of what I carried, you are suffering for something now. There are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices. Oh God, open my eyes. Are you ready to pray for everything you see? Because you will see things that will disturb you. You are about to rest and you see a plane crash. You are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody. And if it happens that way, God will call you and say, if your eyes were closed, you are free. But hence you cried and said, open my eyes. It's not about prophesying, you know, there is a responsibility. Oh God, make me rich. Let me be your distributor. And God stands and says, as you are leaving your house now, carry 50,000. My people are in need of it. Yes, sir. Ah, oh God, you said you want to be my steward. Oh yeah, carry it. And somebody comes and while you are talking, he says, give 5,000 to Sam. There are two little children. Give all of them one 1,000. And you are acting like a fool. And God says, that's how my distribution system works. The day you are not interested, I close the heavens. As simple as that. I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking Brothers and sisters, let me submit to you. If you ever try to sow seeds like me, it may kill you in one month. I'm telling you this sincerely. Lord, make me a millionaire. He says, are you ready to sponsor 70 children? He said, no, no, I don't want that. Oh God, you gave me only two. He says, that's it. Whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a Give me an international anointing. Okay? Do you have the grace to counsel, to preach three, five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself. Father, bless your people. Change their story. A text message comes. Sometimes you don't see me reply your text message. It doesn't mean I don't pray over it. Do you have the sacrifice? Can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them? Everything. And then they don't tell you thank you. And God said it's none of your business. Leave the issue is between me and you. Please listen to me. Oh. These are the engagings. 
It's not just about honor. It's not just about sitting. I'm ready to be a man of God. Are you ready for the criticism? Everything about your life is an open book. Everybody criticizes everything. Can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound? And get up in the morning. Some of you who are so sensitive. I think you stole my phone. How can I be the thief? And you are moving around. And you want to do ministry? You must be broken and you must be worked on by God. Is God speaking to us? This teaching is very sincere. Most of us see blessed people and just admire them. And I look at the greed that is in many people's lives. Greed. You can sit down. Somebody is saying, I've not eaten. There is 1,000 naira in your pocket. You say, go and meet apostle. Go and meet apostle. He, 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 he likes giving. Just talk to him and he will give you. And this is the person holding 1,000 naira. And you are saying, oh God, when will you visit me? And God, even scholarship you will not see. For where? Are we together? This is how this thing works. So, send 200 naira recharge card to your mother. You rejected it. Whereas somebody transferred 1,000 to you. And God says, take 200. Say, how, how many? And it's not like there is an important discussion. And God says, I'm watching your heart. You are not engaging this thing. Let me show us why we are really not getting results. Let's be honest with ourselves. Am I engaging the word? Cain got angry because of Abel's results. And God said, no, no. This is not about Abel. If you do what Abel did to the latter, will you not get his result? Hear me. It doesn't cost God to raise help for you. There is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed. There is something a man of God is not doing. That's why his ministry is not growing. There is something a father, a mother, a brother, a sister is not doing. That's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury. Every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks. Five guys have come. Sister, calm down. Could there be that there's something you are... No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, I just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys. Five of them stupid? That means something in you is attracting them. Because you draw your kind to yourself. The body of Christ likes passing blames. We blame witches. We blame pastors. We blame government. We blame our parents. Let me tell you, your miracle starts the day you get a chair. Or go behind one tree and sit down. I'm surprised seeing many gentlemen. Their lives are not moving. They are not doing anything. After Koinonia, you are just looking at any sister. Who can I now marry you? This one, that time is going. And there's nothing happening. You see what we are saying? A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your Bible and a tape recorder. Lord, it can't be this way. The word of God is coming every day. Why is my life like this? I am 31. I am 35. I am 40. I'm seated. I, can, I have to beg for Gary. Lord, I love you. Something is wrong. And all of a sudden, you come there. Your friend is calling. Say, leave me alone. No, you better leave me alone. Say, is, is your, did you renew your DSTV? Say, don't near my house. You have been deceiving me for many years. And you sit down. And all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes. This sitting down is what we don't do. We stand up moving around. This hustling life. Pillar to post. One thing is needful. Sit down first. Stand up as instructed. Don't move around just like that. It, it, see, the labor of the fool, the engaging of a fool, weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city. Not every action is profitable. It is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding. Apostle, I'm anointed. I'm surprised. I organize a meeting and nobody comes. 
there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray lord i know you are ever faithful pray i take responsibility tonight there is something i am not engaging adequately Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. Nah. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i know one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. Okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business. They honor men. But they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start working and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God? I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. The fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously. Only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time.
Is that true? Yes. Some of us have refused. We have been drumming mental development. And we have refused. So we are mediocre where we are. It's amazing how when the word of God comes, people exempt themselves. Say, this part is not for me. This is the part for me. No. All scripture was inspired. How many? All scripture. God can be talking about mental development. And he can say, me, for me, I'm a man of prayer and fasting. Leave that one for um, um, mental development. All those who want to become professors and lecturers. For me, this is a vineyard. And you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong, regardless of your results. L listen, being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you. Because it will bring about familiarity. You are familiar with every man of God, every program, everything. Yet, it will not bless you. Those that were close to Jesus ran away. They were not getting anything. Nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life. Mental development. Mental development. Upgrading your mind. Expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify Christ. How about people who do not understand authority? This is the mystery they have not engaged. And that's why the devil whips them left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. They have no honor, no regard for anybody on earth. Some of our parents are like that. Like that. Just say, hey, so so man has come to town. Which man? So why are people going to go and see him? What's the spell? You see, you see? And, and they start debating it. And the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering. He does not know that it is for this cause. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. He sits down there and a miracle is close to him. Sometimes in his neighborhood. And he hears Reinhard Bonke preaching and laughs. He says, ah, is that the wise man you were talking about? What is this one? He says, they said, Baba is about to pray for the sick. No, 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 mind those people. And his kind of case is what is being called. And they are being healed. And Reinhard Bonke will go back. And the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there. Look, the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God. Cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance. Look at students here. You heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week. No school fees, no nothing. And then result comes out and you are graduated. Ha <laughs> ba. There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do. We are born again, but everything is mediocre. Everything. Everything. Average mediocre. Local champions. I'm a tailor. Like who? Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm patching here and there. I, Lord, I need increase. And God says, increase your capacity. Be excellent. Be excellent. So that you can now start making clothes. When you make a millionaire's clothes, you get a millionaire's reward. When you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today, 200 tomorrow, 800 today to pay 3,000, and you are arguing and, see, arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person, but you still suffer. You get tired and say, Lord, I've started, I've left this level. I've challenged us who has been excellent. Hallelujah excellent some of us relationships this is the mystery we are not engaging we know it but we are not engaging it hallelujah relationships honorable is here um I, I don't mean to embarrass him but this man of god that you see forget that he's a politician i told you politicians are my friends i'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. They are my friends. 
They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. To make sure she was at the seat of governance. Then she now pushed her up. Say, oh yeah, wait. I'm the one in charge. See that? A true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance. I went for Mubi Crusade. An honorable is here. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this man, as great as he is with his status and all of this, he came for the crusade with his wife, stayed like two days together, and returned back. When I go to Yola, sometimes with his own car, carries me in his own jeep and drives around. Praise the Lord. Relationship. If he calls me and says his wife is having a headache, and you call me. There, there were calls. But let me show you how I will respond. Relationship. That's what brought Dorcas back to life. When Dorcas died, she was a woman who, well, she said, I can't preach, but I can sew. Madam, you are cold. Let me make sweater for you. When she died, the widow said, no way. These wicked men, they are all preachers, but they don't take care of us. You better raise this woman back to life for our sake. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know. Are we together? Yes. Relationships. I told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationship. Everything money can pay for, relationships can pay for it. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. There are things relationships should pay for. You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel she knew it was a strange thing she had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of jesus's disciples left and became his disciple and he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance he went and started lambasting herod because he did not know the protocol of the palace he thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness the way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace there are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places and they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. relationships many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age is that true they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody 
all their friends are successful people. They watch television and tell you this guy was my friend. Do you know that uh, General Buhari was my classmate? Do you know this one was my classmate? Do you know that Kofi Annan, we drank tea together? Oh God, why have you not been there? What has that relationship done for you? This is why when we do things in church, like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning. The, this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future. You will see the person you frowned at in power and glory. And now you will not have the same access again. It is cheaper now than later. You've heard me say we will all be great. But the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because of relationships. What have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things i respect a lot about my dad my dad understands relationships in a strange way he knows almost anybody everywhere if he's a policeman he will scroll down there has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before if it is prisons if it is customs if he's a carpenter even if he's a truck he does not have that stops he knows a mechanic somewhere he knows the one that fixes Peugeot he knows the one that fixes this relationships now it's costly that's a very busy life but it's only busy until the day you need those people one call and they tell someone else, yes, sir. But another, you keep knocking forever. And you say, God, help me. God, I helped you since. You misuse the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engaged them? How long will you continue hating people and talking about them? As though you are going to live in this world alone how long are you ready to continue holding grudges when will you forbear and excel there are ladies over my dead body my mother i will never talk to her but the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman justified she did something wrong but can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension hallelujah I'm passionate about engaging the word. I am passionate. I studied the life of Job because I want to be very prosperous. And I studied his life. I saw things that Job did. That if Job died poor, God would have been a wicked person. I found treasures. I said, ah, this is what Job did. Not the obvious things we see. There were things that Job did. What are you doing? Some of us, these are little children. They never look at you and smile. They look at you and they are afraid. You call them children. Remember, you are not going to die young. You have received the anointing for long life. The children you laugh at today, you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years. They will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence. And you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children. Is God giving us wisdom? These are, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems. These are success systems. I'm I'm challenging us. This engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about. Engage the word. Engage the word. Engage the mysteries you know and stay there. Stay there till it produces. 
don't engage once and complain do you know there was a time in my life i did everything but there was no result everything to be done i cross-checked and it was correct once you have done everything leave god's part to him so when people are complaining and say apostle what am i missing i say you are not missing anything just stay there just like that yes sir stay there god is watching your growth and he knows that if those blessings come you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet so he keeps you and then overnight you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing and they say where did he come from he's always been there waiting i've been sowing seeds continue says not to be wary in well-doing for we will reap in due season there is a due season if you fail not if you fail the due season will come and pass and you will not see anything i will never stop sowing seeds i will sow like a madman until the day the harvest comes i will never stop engaging my passion for god i will never stop building capacity i will respect every man of god and every authority that is producing the results that i'm not producing never will i open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that i'm not producing it's pride of the highest order no matter how simple and how cheap they sound they are engaging something that is producing my results i have a meeting next year and god has granted me the privilege and i'll have the privilege to be meeting with i think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in nigerian i look forward to that meeting i'm preparing for it like i'm writing jam he said apostle for what this dishonor we carry is why we never rise if i sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes i will go down my knees and say thank you sir because it would change my ignorant mind for god's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels i look forward to that meeting i've been praying and fasting about it i say lord this meeting cannot be once we have to be friends we have to be what yes because a friend sticks close to, than a brother this brother sister thing friends hallelujah i know we think it doesn't matter what i just said look at our lives look at our families are you not seeing the rules we have broken for ages god is faithful our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us apostle why are you teaching all this so you can serve god let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me i want they are for as long as they are working in the farms for as long as they are suffering in egypt they can't serve me say let my people go so that they will do what it is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now that when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter you are there with your family you made a way that's the worship song playing when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom we have allocated 10 million to this ministry there is a mission agency we heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say are you a pastor he said no i'm just a brother in church i have been trained that my entire life is about the, the kingdom say are you you, you better stand up and make ends meet and luther continue i said no not in this house we have demarcated this house through understanding exempted forever from certain things Someone comes to your house and says, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no, priesthood, our house, we have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. 
Ah, what about uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is in this house. It is kingdom. Do you think this is possible? What I'm saying. You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy puts his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tie. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, what he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. So you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, so. I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god Men may not believe it, they think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are my God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. Let me round up. It says, For I record that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches 
but there will come a generation and age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just to make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself i exempt myself Shaka -taka -taka -ta. i exempt myself i exempt myself i exempt myself through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a generation that will serve god there is a generation that will seek the god of jacob not seeking money not seeking power we will conquer wealth we will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of god they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah i heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because i read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than 100 times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice and pray engaging the systems of the kingdom not only believing them not only having access to them hallelujah hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience the spirit of spiritual laziness 
that does not allow you engage the word you just keep wishing no no sir no ma lift your voice and pray lord the grace to put the word to work lord i confess i've not been a faithful title pray i i stop playing games with my destiny tonight lord i confess my prayer life has gone down my word life has gone down lord i confess i'm not serious with my destiny as a gentleman god has called me into ministry but i'm not giving it the attention it requires they're admiring people fighting people gossiping and trying to make a name for myself i settle down with destiny 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down I've, I've not been faithful in tithing. That means I've not had a revelation about it. The issue is not just to carry money and start running. The issue is to sit down and say, this month, I'm going to take a course. I'm going to take a study on it. Who has written books in this area? And you sit down. Who has done a very comprehensive, balanced, not hungry, manipulative teaching on it? And you study. That's how you grow. You carry your issue of concern, put it before you. Close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles. Don't leave it. That's how winners work. But all this one of try today, if it's too hard, you turn this direction, you will still meet it there. Stay there and win. Did you hear what I said? Stay there and win. Let me tell you in my little life, I can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable. It's a lie. Don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend. Don't go near them again. I want you to write a list of the mountains before you. Pray, dance, but sit down. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. You read a book. You check something. There's got to be a way. Then you enjoy the beauty of triumph. Brothers and sisters, triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges. You live as if Satan does not exist. There is such a realm. It is my desire with all my heart, among other things that God will bring, not just this ministry. He has helped in a measure, not just me, but every one of us. Not just to a level of spiritual awakening. I, I'm trusting God for an avalanche of, do you know how you conquer poverty? Like, you put it under your feet. This is what God would do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve god all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving god for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on god then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek god for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study there are some of you there are books locked up in your spirit for nations but suffering will not let those books come out because all you are thinking now is oh god let me just look for something to eat we depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death whereas there is a way a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again are we together the last prayer point and we're done for this night i like you to cry and say god hold my hands 
and insist that I don't stop until I get to the, des the place of destiny. Hold my hands. I ask you to. He held the hands of Peter. Some of you in your, in your, in your, in your quest to obey God, you have seen things no dive in your life. Cry and say, Lord, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands, oh God. Stop me from sinking and lift me up. Use my life as a spectacle to show what you can do with the anointing. To show what you can do with influence. To show what you can do with men and women who are passionate about agenda. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship. And I will worship with all my heart. I'm leading a generation to seek him. Lord, we will search for you and we will find you. We will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship listen rounding up before i make the altar call listen to me i want to encourage hold on guys i want to encourage every brother here you are a brother when you go back home this night please please do this go and get a notebook sit down use this weekend please thank god there, there's there's holiday today tomorrow sunday even if it's one hour please just do what i'm asking you to do find somewhere alone everybody say alone not with your neighbor not group find somewhere alone whether it's one forest somewhere or outside near one tree one dam somewhere and just sit down with a notebook and a paper don't carry any book just go and stay there and say holy spirit i'm rededicating my destiny not my life to you you are the only one who can help me this ministry you are giving me this business this life this family is too much for me i am ready to receive your wisdom and you it will shock you what god will do for you in that retreat don't do it sitting in your room or your parlor no 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 find a place go somewhere if you see someone there find another corner somewhere one grass somewhere one uncompleted building of a school somewhere just hang around somewhere even if it's for one hour take a time of inventory the way i'm living my life am i going to make it are we together this is called self-supervision sit down the way i'm running my family are we going to rise this way the way i'm living my life am i going to be great this way the the time i am giving god will this time really birth his glory in me and then come up by the spirit with resolutions the lord will show you areas the Lord will show you things. Ladies, you can do it too. I'm not saying it's, it's just for guys and then ladies lazy around. This is everybody's destiny. Carry a notebook. Flog it out somewhere. Let me tell you the second thing I want you to do. Please hear me and don't be offended with what I'm telling you. You have to search for the names and numbers of certain people and delete them out of your phone. I repeat you have to search for the names comma and the numbers of certain people and do what delete them out of your phone i promise you being a friend of everybody will not give you your destiny are we together there are people who are not bad they are not demonic but they are too distracting to accommodate them their their, their distraction to your destiny is not worth it let them be. The day you rise, you can always recall them. But for now, you are on a project. Some of you may need to trust God to get a place, whether off or get a small room with somebody. You, you just need to pay whatever price it will take 
to allow you build this great destiny are we together yes some of you may need to minimize certain useless visitations visitations that don't make sense from pillar to post flying around no some of you may need to minimize movies i'm not saying movies are wrong don't don't misunderstand me but let me tell you you are not going to spend your whole life watching movies and you make it in life no sir is that true some of us may need to minimize sleep 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 snore your way time is going but this is Bible say a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the and poverty comes upon you like an arm bandit some of us may need to minimize food please i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong but i'm telling you gluttony is killing some of us killing some of us some of us need to reduce your three phones to one the two are not doing anything they are distracting you distracting you some of you need to reduce the number of social media platforms except you are there maybe on business or something you are on every social media platform your phone is beeping per second per second some of us may need to off our phones that's what you need for that one two hours off it there is nothing that is too urgent off it and spend time with god these are the things that distract people who have potentials of greatness the holy spirit wants to make greatness out of people but we keep getting distracted if you can pay this price i press you you may not like me now for what i'm telling you but tomorrow you will see me and say thank you sir the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth no matter how uncomfortable i love you too much to leave you the way you are there is a level of anointing you must enter there is a level of influence you must enter i want god to do business with you that he you will rise to become a voice for his majesty this is what he's looking for father we give you the glory tonight you have challenged us tonight this is more than a sermon this is the heart of god pounding on your destiny the lord is challenging us very truthfully and seriously that's the god we serve so when miracles are not just a proof that a man is anointed that's the last reason for a miracle miracles are a message it's a reply from god back to men and to the gates of hell i am still faithful the lion the lamb my benevolence is still in force i am still good my mercy endures forever and he uses men sometimes you see in his wisdom he just allows the devil to exhaust his knowledge then he comes in so cheaply and lifts a man and says satan how about this when you understand this hear me you will passionately pursue the presence and the power of god not for fame you are seeking to give god space there is a statement that god needs to write to principalities and powers they mock god in our lives are we together this is what happens because it's difficult brothers and sisters we are humans when your life has a track red code of perpetual failure it will test your faith and that's when satan comes and tries to say where is your god you are 39 years as a lady you have loved god all your life no marriage and i'm here believing my life anyhow i'm still married but another man still wants to add another marriage to me look at two of us brothers and sisters they are not speaking on their own it's a letter so it is good to give god thanks in that situation but it's best to give god thanks in victory are we together yeah. thank you demonic forces they exist they are real and they have made nonsense first thessalonians 2 18 please let's hurry up first thessalonians 2 18 the apostle was speaking and he opened us up to something very very profound i want us to read together ready one to read wherefore we would have come to you even i your breakthrough but what happened help me please once and again 
your breakthrough would have come to you your prayers answered already but satan hindered us satan can attempt to hinder men from meeting men satan can attempt to hinder things from meeting men are we together now it's part of the reasons why we pray we pray because in the place of prayer we create our own climate and we command the forces of darkness we enforce the victory of christ and we clear the air for believers to receive the fullness of the blessings of god the last reason very quickly and then we'll pray why do people experience limitations in their lives they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment this is the last reason the last reason i've given you four reasons why people remain in perpetual defeat they trivialize and ignore for many the place of spiritual empowerment ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 we celebrate the anointing of the holy spirit in this place not just the ministry of the spirit as you know we're on a series in the holy spirit he said finally my brethren haven't told you all these other things finally my brethren be strong in the lord be strong in the lord and in the power of his the word might there means his resources his resources the power that comes with his resources there are arsenals there are mysteries there are supplies of graces and possibilities that make god god and the bible says we should be strong in that the power our access to those things is what gives us strength in this kingdom are we together now there are powers of darkness that will arise and contend with believers once and again psalm 66 verse 3 psalm 66 verse 3 let's read one to go say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways help me please through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves brothers and sisters it takes power to reign in this kingdom it takes power to reign in this wicked world it will take power for you to rise and not compromise yet prosper it takes power it's more it takes more than sincerity in a wicked and a depraved world are you going to bribe no i will stand in for truth that means there is no promotion for you and you can remain there for decades are you from so 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 state no i'm not no you are not qualified for this position human sentiments it takes power to defy the wickedness of men it takes power hallelujah it takes power it takes power to build a ministry much more than wisdom it takes the ability of god he says rabbi john 3 verse 1 we know that thou art a man nicodemus seeing the mighty works of jesus christ they criticized him in the day but he smuggled his way to jesus in the night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him the anointing of the holy spirit is god's authorization upon a man to represent him god's authorization the anointing of the holy spirit is god's ability listen the capacity to produce god's result god's dimension of result can only be produced by his dimension of power and grace we trivialize the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing 
the anointing i've said it again i want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students I was teaching them when we we're doing pneumatology I was teaching them about the anointing and I said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father is an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness the sentiments the ethno religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections Others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability God's ability Working in me, it's working in me. That will be your testimony. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. Working in me. The anointing will always produce supernatural results. You've heard me say it. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in our eyes. If it is a man's doing, it is natural and logical. But brothers and sisters, when your result defies the natural progression, there is another agency other than you. When your results in any area of life, listen, they called Jesus. They said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub. He said, if I use Beelzebub, the prince of demons, by whom do your fathers? Their fathers were casting out devils. They fraternized with the realm of the spirit, accessed powers higher than a human power, and were producing results. That statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know. Yes. Yes. In this day and age, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes. You don't just tell somebody be healed. That's arrogance without the anointing. Now, let me show you something. I've taught you this again and again, but I feel like doing it. Let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me, please. Look at this. Because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing. I want you to learn this, please. By the grace of God and by the privilege of His grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, hey Jimmy, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated per unit time to produce supernatural results that's the anointing listen if I try to lift this 
it doesn't mean I don't have energy it means the energy dissipated per unit time is small so I need another agency to assist me is that true believers this is how it is so it is not that the name of Jesus is there is not working it is not that the anointing is not working the situation that you are confronted with this is why grace and peace is multiplied because there are situations that defy that current level so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you why is it multiplied how God anointed Jesus Acts 10 30 look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if Dan Gote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him because it is within his capacity are we together if koinonia decides to give everybody here one one million we'll have a problem somewhere correct not because we don't have money it is the limit of our capacity so it's not when when this guy has a problem it's like a shop there is a dimension of anointing required to solve it so when you come to help him it's not just that you laid hands he may even fall down but the money is short what do you need more 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 of the same thing not more of a different thing more of what the same thing so benihin can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair you see that the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of god when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of god because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much god tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes god look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that god produces we still remain in the secret place because there is more brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if i ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of god gets up here called joshua selman i would be a wicked man if i have not stayed with god sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the holy spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God. And we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry. That's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith. He switches to the covenant that that man has with him. And it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men. Are we together? Tonight... Let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys. Yes, yes. It doesn't take time. It only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it. Learn this about the anointing. The anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory 
when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that I'm working with God and I seek to get. I have seen them in dreams and visions and I did not see this current level. We are trusting God for levels where before koinonia starts, before the first prayer point, half of the people who come sick are already healed. Completely. One woman, one of our mothers, I met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays really little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say jesus can i flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory. Please rise up on your feet. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart number one I like you to insist and say Lord I release my faith there is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back go ahead and pray prophesy declare it I wave every captivity goodbye Jesus is Lord now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Hala prakato sete katapanda shabrakadabala. Shikete paratos kapratas kalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na 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 shela na. Shikadabala kataprakato sekete. Shebres kete shalabanda katai. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It's a rare 
realm of your glory is the realm of your grace I can see your mighty power moving in this place we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings and like the voice of many waters I can hear the angels sing you are holy you are holy you are holy you are holy ta da da ta da da ta da da One last prayer point. Father, take me to a new dimension. There is always more. Lift your voice and pray. Take me to a new dimension. Take me to a new dimension. are you praying take me to a new level let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence let there be an evidence let there be a testimony Nina Ka Wiabo Sarki Salama Nina Ka Wiabo be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is
Now listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit and I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now at the count of three in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now at the count of three I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take a Inside and outside. That fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, take it out. Bring them out. Sheplotos Kobata. Right now, in the name of Jesus, my God. I see deliverances happening to people by the Spirit of the Living God. Deliverances happening to people right now. Right now, right now. Bring them out, please. In the name of Jesus. Shebre Teketa. Outside, overflow one. I see a ministry of angels. Strong ministry of angels. Bring them out, please. Shebra Kato Soto Laka. Brande Keto Soto Bash. I come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I establish victory. Victory, I command it. Break through every force of darkness. Defying the word of the Lord. I bless the word of God upon your life. Right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, my God. I still see these breakthroughs. I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit. Listen, I'm seeing at least 17 people. 17 people I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon you. Strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by the count of three. One, two, three. Open now. Open now. I command it. I declare it now. Now. Open doors. By the Spirit of God. Open doors. Open doors. Satan Seketa. My God. Doors opening. Over lives. Opening. Over destinies. Opening. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. and pray the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, where are they? Men and women who have been delayed strangely. Right now, right now, right now, I command that light and power, that light and power, ending delays now. Mighty in this place, mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place, mighty in this place. You are mighty in our
strange in the spirit coming upon sisters i'm seeing a strange grace for speed just sisters sisters i'm seeing this and the lord is asking me to prophesy it as soon as i prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed i see this in the realm of the spirit now lord i place the word of god upon this prophecy and i declare ladies step into speed now supernatural speed run like elijah i command it i decree it in the name of jesus strength speed strength speed strength speed it's coming on you now like the dew of heaven coming on you now hallelujah hallelujah the Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now and I'm seeing keys being given to people keys listen keys it will come on you like fire I see keys these keys are solutions and strategies solutions and strategies solutions and strategies you will help me shout that name Jesus again I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God now Lord I pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three get ready now my God my God my God one two three take this key for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now, all those who come from that region, South South, South South, a miracle. Now, but don't shake it. Let them take it to Sumata, Lakata, Braskata, Bashikate. In the name of the Lord Jesus, South South, the Spirit of the Lord brings breakthrough to men and women. You can't stand it. Breakthrough. Every hand in delay from the South South. I see the hand of God strong upon men and women strong upon men and women ending captivities by the spirit of the living God hallelujah there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the Lord is showing me someone please let let that person whoever he is or she is 
please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come holy holy don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mic i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in Kano. where is she she's at Kano. where is she that's what i'm saying she's at Kano. and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture is she have uh, up to now she have never that get married uh -uh. and this, this day she's sick this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in Kano and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from me now niger state niger state thank the lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children what you have? have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all i'm looking in a vision and i'm seeing one more a baby girl yes. after this yes. hold my hand sir but the lord is going to i'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but i want to pray for you because the lord is saying i should release you from this hold my hand sir i bring you life in the name of jesus christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of jesus christ mama please come i don't know this woman but i'm asked to pray for you I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this. You are a woman of prayer. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Look at me, man. You love God sincerely, but many things are going around. They are scattered in your life. And you have been asking, can God come? Can God step in? Even when you were there, you were praying that prayer. I heard you praying and the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's giving you rest today. He's giving you supernatural rest. Madam, please stand up. Please stand up, man. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? It's from Sabon Gary. You are coming. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you. As I lay my hands on you, I want to believe. There's someone, you are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. You are outside. Your baby is sick. Run with the person and come now. Daddy, sir, can I pray for you, sir? I'm going to pray for you. And the Lord is going to give you peace. And the Lord is going to raise people to help you. Now, sincerely speaking, I want to be honest with you. It is not within my power to stop you from getting married. I we generally can only advise because you see, let me teach you something, especially as a pastor. There are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world. And when you are ministering sensitive things like this, um, they are listening and every territory has laws. Are we together now? Things are a bit flexible in Nigeria, but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying, don't marry another wife, the son can go and sue me or the ministry. So this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith. Are we together, sir? It is not within my power and I have no right to judge you. I can only declare the counsel of God and pray for you. Um, this is very important. When you are speaking to people, although by the spirit, it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling god there is one more thing you want to tell me i'm hearing your prayers come what is it give her the mic is that true you are standing there and you are praying 
and you are saying you wish that I can call you again, there is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, if not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny help us. Amen. Lord, send people. Amen. You see, we must pray that God will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers. It's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child, as if she never trained anybody. That's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late. Now, according to scripture, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But sadly, being as the situation is, we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones. A woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again. I pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat. That God himself will empower you and establish you and send you help. Mama, don't cry. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. See me after the service, madam. In Jesus' name. Thank you. I pray for you, sir. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord change your life, change your situation right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the one with the child? Please come. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. What's wrong with him? He's, he's running temperature this evening. Just this evening? Yes, sir. But he has been having persistent cough. 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 Let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, I pray for this, your dear son. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now. And for you, his mother, I command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Please, why are they here? Mama, come. Please stand up. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's taking away reproach and pain. Amen from Amen. your life. Amen. This is what he's saying. Please stand up. Please stand up, man. That he's rolling away reproach. You see, as God speaks to one person, he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone. It doesn't mean that we have to call you. The time will not let that happen. Are we together now? For instance, madam, are you from Kaduna? Who is from Kaduna? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Not just a person, a woman. There is a mama from Kaduna that I want to speak to now. This is a young lady now, a, 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 a mama, like elderly woman. There's a woman who came here from Kaduna. Not a young lady, please. I, I want to just speak to that person very quickly. Mommy, look at me. You have gone through so much pain. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, it's your children that will wipe your tears. It's your children that will wipe your tears. May the Lord raise them and may they wipe your tears. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Why is she here? You are the Deeper Life um, lady. You are, you are a member of Deeper Life. Are you sure? Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, I pray that you do a miracle in her life right now. Put your hand on your stomach. God is taking something away from your stomach now. I curse it. Something is leaving you now as I hold your hands. You are even surprised. Even you, you would not have known that there is something there. I'm seeing like a malignant growth, something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be over now in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. 
very bad friends and I'm still seeing it again I don't know where that guy is and the Lord is asking that we pray for him again you see all these gentlemen you have to be careful it's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station hold my hands I pray for you the Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural restoration sir I pray for you you will not I don't know what is making I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest and the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure in Jesus name I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for all of you come sir let me just make contact with you very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ Hasana Hasana we are going to pray for the sick now we have to be very fast Hasana Hassan, I'm seeing someone with the name Hassana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hassana, whether you're inside, outside. Hassana from Kogi State. Hassana. Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hassana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration restoration the Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you in the name of Jesus may you be a benefactor of the mercy of God the mercy of the living God the mercy of the living God the mercy of the living God the mercy yes it's all right if your names are Hassanah the mercy of the living God your name too your name is Hassanah interested in what I'm seeing. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is Koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain, repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families standing in for their families let the oppression in your family end now this girl's family has gone through all kinds of things this is koinonia i bring you the life and power that is in the name of jesus now this is what we're going to do please listen very carefully um you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people i wish that we had all the time but we have to work with time and um we are going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. 
whether you are inside or outside if you are trusting god listen please whether you are inside or outside aside from these particular cases if you are trusting god for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person whether you are inside or outside please don't come in at random i want you to come in i want to minister to you myself aside from that now we're going to pray for the sick overflow one please all of you should walk to the front of your projector you'll be ministered to overflow two and the ones extension of overflow four please walk to the projector stand outside overflow three walk to your projector stand outside very quickly and those inside here i want you to just walk out to me very quickly we're going to minister to people in that order there are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you're outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we're going to minister to you now it'll be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people will be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um have i told you where to go to okay so would we'll go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is the, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Jebrondos <laughs> 
New levels. There are people God is fishing out here. New dimensions. Shebros kaparu shabradi salad. Shebros katabrandega dego shalabradi asha. Engreto susa brigatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one not a ritual it's not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me to take off my shoes we are going to pray right now please i want you to participate i take time to explain this so that we all understand um i may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and i'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the god of heaven who answers prayers jesus jesus the son of the living god now arise O lord Come to your resting place. Brood upon these requests. Let there be mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. Mighty miracles.
hallelujah in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony it's turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus the Son of the living God every request here no matter how impossible is turned into strange and speedy testimonies in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of Jesus most high the son of the living God every request here I say again is turned into a testimony in the name of Jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting I want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that God allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of God makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember I told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer i'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know god and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of god this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it is is inaccurately used hallelujah let's correct things now let's recreate things now Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captivity, Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captivity. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us, his Israel. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command that door be open now be open now be open now The Bible.
Bible says, have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, he says, she shall give birth to son. I decree and declare, whatever you have been incubating for a long time, revealed to you by the spirit, but yet to manifest, there is grace for performance. And I command that you must have a manifestation now. I decree it. I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Manifested blessings. Manifested miracles. Hallelujah. I decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything, labor for everything, I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings. I open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who has despised the grace of God upon your life. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I prophesy to you, may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you. I decree it, I declare it. May an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you, there are several things that have limited your pace. I want to prophesy speed for you. There is a grace that makes men to pursue, to overtake, to recover. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. As I pray for you, the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically. Please hold them. I release that grace, that grace for speed. Receive that grace now. Speed, speed, speed. She got to Sodo Balata. No delay. I command speed. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of accomplishment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6 it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. It says, But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles. You won't look for them again. Gentiles shall come to your light. And even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising. It says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you. I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare from today. Every gift you have. Every dream. Every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded. I command Gentiles to come to your light now. I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. And David said, Is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth. And when he came, he sat down with David and he says, You will continue to dine with me here. In the name of Jesus, where your strength cannot take you. Satos Kapratikata. Where your current level of achievement cannot take you. I decree and declare. May the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence. May that hand pick you to the next level of your life. May that hand pick you to the next level of your life. Hallelujah. It says, and I will restore to you the years 
alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sitest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God's body. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands, be it in your finances. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command supernatural results. Supernatural results. Supernatural results. I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results. I change the result now. I change the results now. I change the results now. hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus hallelujah this is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us i discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from god through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of Jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season Whoever must endorse the testimony of God upon your life as a man of God, as a businessman, whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach. I prophesy to the north, I prophesy to the south, I prophesy to the east and west. Wherever your destiny helpers are, I command them to come into your life now. Hallelujah. Listen. 
I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that god can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. And pray specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adullam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty of people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life may they appear in your life appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called I give life to that which is dying now I give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service June you will return here ten times better literally ten times better hallelujah please lift your hands I want to release something there are people here you love God I gave you an example of this anointing there needs to be an upgrade you see the thing with the anointing is if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that the anointing is a very obvious quality of God it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors who are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace it can manifest as anything wisdom strategies supernatural grace the grace for performance I want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house every dimension from prophetic dimensions Jabo Sikata there are people receiving it now there are others is being activated others is being multiplied in the name of Jesus I open you up now strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit I pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now I activate it now by the power of the Holy Spirit I release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership 
supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ but thou shall remember the Lord thy God it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly he says you shall call on Aaron and his sons he said and you shall take your honor and give it honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguished I pray for you from today that grace for honor I release it upon your life may you be honored at the gates of your destiny may you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward tonight may their prayers be answered hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done I pray for your family we believe in family in this place no matter how lifted you are if your family is not lifted he said as for me and my house we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness tonight in the name of Jesus supernatural lifting for every family 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 and finally I pray for you in a way you have never seen whoever looks at your face I compel them to favor you listen the Bible says Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her for as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me I have seen this thing work in my life I prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you I compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you Thank you for lifting. 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 We are rounding up, but the Lord is giving me a word here. The Lord is speaking to a family here and he's saying I should tell you it will be like a dream when in three weeks it will change your life. It will be like a dream. 21 days in three weeks he will change your life. Whoever this is for I release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is also speaking to one person. 
you are going to start a business next month on the 5th and I'm seeing before 31st it has made you a millionaire in the name of Jesus I'm not motivating you I'm speaking as the spirit is giving me unction you don't believe it you will never see it never ever see it every difficulty you came here with in the name of Jesus you leave it down here and walk back free in the name of Jesus quickly in one minute everyone still standing I want to make two altar calls now very quickly the first please keep standing everybody no moving around inside outside please there are people here men and women who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by his spirit please let's keep standing to honor them and whilst you watch the power of God move the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith the family of the Lord Jesus Christ you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call the second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying man of God if you will lead me I will run I will run run to Jesus now these two categories of people i know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain i'm going to count five wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly i have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Run to Jesus, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. No turning back. Help me worship Him. I have decided. please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters I appreciate you for this great decision you have made the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life I want to pray for you listen I don't want you to just recite this as a poem I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before Jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church I want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again 
in the name of Jesus Christ may they never be the same again I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare a new life for you I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you I release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the Lord bless you I love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this as fast as we can dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.